was a little girl, my sister was on a swim team that practiced where the University of Alabama had their swimming pool with the huge diving towers. And my sister was a very gifted swimmer, so I spent a lot of time sitting at this pool, staring at the 10-meter tower, terrified. Sometimes they let us, you know, jump off the low boards occasionally, and one day they said that we could go all the way up to the top and jump from the 10-meter platform. And I was really scared, but I climbed up there, and I looked down at this room that I had spent so much time in, and everything looked different, dangerous in some way, and I had a choice to make. I could jump and face my fears, or I could slink back down the ladder and face the teasing of my older brother. <laughs> I, however, was not given a choice when I was born what body I was going to have. My mom had a perfectly normal pregnancy. There was nothing that should indicate that anything was wrong. Um, but when she was in labor, uh, one of the doctors said, uh-oh, which is exactly what you want to hear when you're in the hospital. <laughs> when they knocked her out, she woke up in recovery with my dad there, and she said, what's going on? Where's the baby? And he said, she's fine. She's healthy. She was just born without the lower halves of her legs. To which my mom said, that's all, bring me my kid. Yeah. I had the incredible fortune to be born to a set of parents that didn't necessarily m see my physical circumstances, something that was wrong or bad. It was just what was. I have three older siblings. They all have their fingers and toes. They are jerks. <laughs> I, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. They're lovely people. <laughs> the greatest thing about my family, really, was that they didn't treat me like I was made of glass. You know, there was a doctor once that told my mom early on that the world doesn't need another athlete. And, you know, he was right for a really long time. I would find other things that I was good at. There are a lot of occupations that someone who was born with a disability could choose to do. I could do a lot of things where I would just sit and work. I, however, have chosen two occupations uh, that are very difficult, whether you have legs or not. When I was a little kid, I saw a production of Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and there was a girl, the girl playing Violet, the one that blows up like a big blueberry. She went to my school, and I had this moment of, oh my God, people can actually do this? I, I want to do this. I want to I be that blueberry. <laughs> and I had this moment of like, well, if she can do this, why can't I? And it was not long after that that I decided that this was going to be the way I spent the rest of my life. And there were, sure, there were a lot of people that were gently cautioning me that it was hard, acting is a very tough field, and, you know, maybe you have a backup plan or a second major. And I just could not give up on my dreams like that. I had climbed up there, and I had seen this beautiful world that I was jumping into, and I, it inspired me, and it scared me, and it excited me, so I jumped. I got my degree in acting, and I did professional theater in Chicago for a number of years before that got way too cold. <laughs> and then I moved to L.A., where I've done television and film, and I've done quite a bit. And what's interesting is the opportunities that I've had and the jobs that I've had, a lot of them have been because of my physical difference. Whatever it is that makes you different and special, whatever gets your foot in the door, even if it's a prosthetic foot. It was when I moved to Southern California that a prosthetist, the guy who makes prosthetic legs, asked me if I wanted to try running. Now, I'm an actress, and it's important to stay in shape and those types of things, so I said yes, you know, for fun. It took me a long time to sort of figure out the mechanics of running, because I'd never run before in my life. When I finally did, you know, we were like, hey, let's go to a track meet, you know, for fun. It was at that first track meet that a Paralympic track coach saw me and really encouraged me to take track seriously. 
What I didn't realize was at that point, there literally weren't other women doing what I had just done. I was one of the first. In 2007, when I'd finally made it onto the US Paralympic team, I became the first bilateral above the knee amputee to compete internationally in track in the world, male or female. And you know, I spent a lot of time competing against women who had physical advantages over me. One, some women had one leg and they were missing a leg below their knee. Some women had both legs and they were missing an arm. How fair is that? <laughs> so it was at that point that I really had to figure out a way, knowing going into races that I was gonna come in last. How do you measure success if you don't come home with a medal around your neck? And that's when setting personal goals became so vitally important to me, and they became everything throughout the rest of my running career. I set my sights on the 2008 Beijing Paralympic Games. Four days before our trials, I had a horrible fall. I scraped up my face, I blackened my eye, and the worst thing that happened was that I hurt my back. I attended the trials, I sang the national anthem, I sat in the stands and I watched my 100 meters run past me. And with that, all of my hopes of representing our country. I was devastated. I actually didn't step foot onto a track for almost two years because I was afraid. Afraid of falling again, afraid of failing. But it really felt like there was some unfinished business for me. It was something that I knew that if I didn't try again, the rest of my life I would regret it. So I was scared, but I started to compete again. And again, I was alone for a long time until 2011 at the World Championships in New Zealand. I saw this German athlete trotting around the track on two prosthetic legs. And it was like seeing a unicorn. <laughs> I couldn't believe there was another one of me. When I finally met her, she came up to me and she said, my name is Vanessa. Thank God she spoke English, because I don't speak German. She said, I lost my legs in an accident four years ago. I recently saw a video of you on YouTube running, and you're the reason that I'm here. Wow. Wow. Now, I don't tell that story to pat myself on the back or for applause or to say how cool I am. It was one of those moments in my life where you could tangibly see the ripple effect. And the things that you do and the things that we do when we put ourselves out in the world, it affects other people, whether you know it or not. And sometimes it affects people on the other side of the globe. I had the incredible honor of representing the United States in the London 2012 Paralympic Games. Thank you. I raced Vanessa again there. She beat me, but we won't talk about that. <laughs> um, no, it was one of the most amazing moments of my life. I set a new American record in the 100 meters, and it is a moment that I will always treasure and be proud of myself for trying again. I sometimes think back to that little girl up on the high dive looking down, and you know what? I didn't jump that day. And I have always regretted it because I was never given the opportunity again. So what I have learned from my life experiences, it is always better to try and maybe fail and maybe learn something than to never try and always wonder what if. Thank you so much. <laughs>